Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. Today, we have an incredible deep dive into the first photographs of Lebanon, including ancient Baalbek. These photographs are being attributed in today's narrative to Felix Bonfries. These images, as with most of the images we have looked at in my history of making videos, when we look at photographs from the Middle East, Africa, and the Far East, we usually have, at best, a circa date that is given. In this case, it is no different. Most of the images in today's video either do not have a date or they are dated between 1860 and 1885. 1885 being the year that Felix passed away. Now, right off the bat, when you look into these images, we will notice that for the date given and considering the somewhat unflinching weather conditions of 19th century Lebanon, it's surprising to see how detailed these photographs actually are. In many of the images, we will see running water photographed with extreme detail. We also have these wide, beautiful shots as well as panoramic photographs and a cornucopia of these up close images which are framed under the auspices of being created as souvenirs for european travelers to the area to take home To supplement these images, which towards the halfway point of this video, will include the first photographs of the utterly important and ancient site of Baalbek, we will also briefly dive into the currently accepted history as to where these photographs come from, how they came to be produced, the story of our photographer Felix Bonfils, and we will also dabble into the brief yet currently accepted history of Baalbek. Felix Bonfils was a member of numerous Masonic orders. His most famous self-portrait that you will see on his Wikipedia page and numerous other sources depicts him with the hidden hand. Felix was a Frenchman, being one of a handful of artists who moved to the Middle East to produce photographs to sell as souvenirs. He was one of the first commercial photographers to produce images of the Middle East on a production level scale. He is also considered one of, if not the first photographer to employ a new method of color photography developed in 1880 known as photochrome. Remarkable to me, even in all our years of research and we have discussed photochrome, it seems the dates are constantly being pushed back in the narrative. We are now led to believe that a relatively advanced and clear and high definition version of color photography was achieved by the year 1880. We are told in this narrative when Felix's career began, as many others in our deep dives on photography, Felix was not a photographer. Felix was actually a bookbinder who was said to have traveled to the Middle East under the orders of France to cover the conflicts that were occurring in the area. Learning about what Felix called hidden knowledge, as well as the new process of photography, Felix then returned to France, opening his first photography studio. When Felix married and had a son, he remembered the Eastern traditions of Beirut and sent his sickly newborn son there for treatment, where his son survived. Felix then moved to Beirut himself in 1867, opening his second studio, known as Mason Bonfils. Under the Mason Bonfils title, Felix produced thousands of unique photographs of the Middle East and Northern Africa. By 1878, Felix dropped the Mason from his studio title under pressure from his son, who had now joined the family business. While Felix produced the vast majority of his work, according to this accepted history, his wife, his son, as well as other close family friends were also involved in the photographic process making identifying the exact photographer on any of these images very difficult. In my 
my opinion, this sounds like plausible deniability, but I digress. Bonfis also utilize photochrome, or old world color photography, the year of its advent, 1880, being the first to take color photographs of much of the Middle East. Felix passed away in 1885, but his family continued to produce photographs until roughly World War I, when the business was closed down and the tens of thousands of photographic prints were distributed to the highest buyer. Many of Felix's photographs reside in the world's most important museums, including numerous dozens of them in the Library of Congress. One of Felix's most photographed sites in the country of Lebanon was Baalbek. Baalbek, the ancient ruins, are said to have been continually occupied for the last 8,000 to 9,000 years. Baalbek was said to sit upon a well-watered stream, possibly being man-made, and according to Macrobius, Baalbek was founded either by Egyptian or Assyrian priests. During the Canaanite period, massive temples already resided at Baalbek, and modern excavations revealed that first sat massive pillar altars, most likely used by the Egyptian priests. Eventually, the land around these pillar altars was gradually raised to reach the height of the altar and the rest of the temple was constructed around it. In Islamic mythology, Baalbek was a temple inherited by Solomon, put together by jinn and gifted to the Queen of Sheba as a wedding gift. In Roman mythology, and indeed, according to modern excavations, the majority of the current ancient structure is of Roman origin, likely built under Augustus, and mentioned in dozens of Roman sources, including Josephus, Pliny, and Ptolemy. Different sources obviously credit this most ruined masterpiece to various creators, all of which make claims for a title which now appears moot. Overall, Baalbek truly has ties to many major myths and legends throughout numerous cultures, and yet the true history here, even through the decades of renovation and excavation, is still open to debate. It's nearly impossible to fully comprehend. But what we do have in these photographs and what we have looked at today are the oldest images of Lebanon and Baalbek, through which we can make our own assumptions and our own determinations about what we believe truly occurred within this history. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. I hope that you have seen things that have stood out to you. If there have been things that have stood out to you, I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. I always look forward to our discussion. Please save any image in this video so you can keep it for your own collection on the old world because I truly encourage others to start their own collection. It will help you study, it will help to give you ideas, and these images are truly breathtaking. So why not have them in your own collection? I believe I'm going to wrap up my narration on this video there, but stick around. We have roughly 16 photographs left to look at, and when we consider that these images were taken in the 1860s, the 1870s, maybe a few in the early 1880s, and we find that they are so detailed. Again, when these were put into digital format, some of these photographs are over 50 megabytes large. So to see all of this detail, the running water, the people in focus, and to see how advanced the photography really was during this time period, it makes you question some things 
And then when we actually look at the architecture of Baalbek and of the rest of Lebanon, it really brings into focus what was happening in the Middle East and what was really happening behind the scenes that for a time period was not being the focus of European scholars. It was only really after photography came to the limelight that these places really came to be studied by academia. So I thought that was really interesting. I wanted to share these first photographs with you and I would love to hear what you think down below.